Hi, I'm Jill Stewart. I'm the Philip Singer Distinguished Professor of Environmental Sciences and Engineering in the Gilling School of Global Public Health. I have a couple of different hats in the Galapagos. Um, I also I serve as deputy director, and in that role, I, I work to bring together people from across campuses and even well beyond campuses, across different disciplines, across universities, across different countries to come together to address really big questions around human and environmental interactions with implications for climate change, conservation, invasive species, uh, pathogen, uh, One Health, recognizing that human, animal, and environmental health is all related, and a number of really important larger topics that couldn't be addressed individually. I'm also a researcher with several projects in the Galapagos. A number of those projects um, center around water and pathogens. Uh, when I first arrived in the Galapagos, there um, hadn't been any capacity for testing water quality, and so one of the first things we did was to build that capacity in the microbiology and molecular biology lab at the GSC. And thanks to that, we were for the first time able to understand, is the water safe to drink there? Is it safe to, to swim in the water there? Um, and so just to have that data was very valuable to the local communities and also really interesting to understand impacts of human activities that, that were already occurring there. And then once we had those baseline measurements, we built a monitoring program so that we could look at trends over time. And we were testing water quality, drinking water quality, recreational water quality, and wastewater quality over years. Um, and, and it's ongoing to this day. Currently, there, there's a lot of effort between, behind achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and Goal 6 is, is dedicated to bringing safe water to, to all. Um, but there's questions about how to do that and what are, what are the appropriate metrics for it. Um, and a gold standard generally is to build a water treatment plant and be able to pipe that to houses, which, which we were able to achieve in the Galapagos. When we went to the treatment plant, uh, the water coming out of the plant uh, is clean, and we've seen this over time as part of our monitoring program. And so the treatment is working. Um, however, it seems that in the distribution and handling of the water, it becomes recontaminated. If we go to the tap water um, in the households that have participated in our study, sometimes there's still E. coli in that water or other contaminants. And so we're finding that just building a water treatment plant is insufficient. Additional work uh, needs to be done to make sure people are receiving safe water all the way to the point of use. Um, and really a more holistic uh, viewpoint about how to bring safe water to people needs to be taken. It's not just um, engineers putting in a treatment plant, but how it might be distributed, stored, and, and people's behaviors around it, particularly in areas including island nations and elsewhere where there's not quite enough water, um, where there might be intermittent flow, um, where water might have to be stored, stored, and so it has additional opportunities for recontamination. And so thinking through those systems all the way through to, the, to a person actually using the water um, is going to be really important, and we're learning those lessons in the Galapagos and we can share those globally. Working in the Galapagos has been invaluable uh, to my scientific inquiries. It's been really helpful to be able to bring students um, down to the Galapagos and provide opportunities there. And then both uh, working in the Galapagos, both here and in the Galapagos, because we're there, we're able to work with so many people across disciplines. And so being there, we're able to do really much larger interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary work than we could do by ourselves. And so we can come in and bring a public health microbiology perspective, but it's invaluable to go to the Galapagos and be able to work um, with veterinarians and, and um, biologists and, and all sorts of people who are doing other sorts of, of research, and then link those together and, and answer some of these larger questions. One of the projects we're doing, for example, is around antibiotic resistance, um, and we're using a One Health approach to do that, recognizing that the health of humans, animals, and the environment are inextricably linked. And we would not be able to do this research on our own, um, even if, if we went down the Galapagos. It needs to be done in partnership, and the Galapagos um, is a place where that happens, where people can collaborate and work together across disciplines for these larger questions. And in particular for me, I wouldn't be able to do my work around water and pathogens without the microbiology and molecular biology lab, um, which is one of four laboratories there. And it, it's, um, it actually brought the capability there to do water quality testing when that capacity did not exist before. And we've also built capacity now for more advanced molecular analyses. Um, one example, a very important example, is, is that we are now linked to the UNC sequencing facility, the high throughput sequencing facility. So UNC has put uh, a lot of investment over the years in having a core facility on campus that people can use for sequencing. And we now, with the Microbiology and Molecular Biology Laboratory, can collect samples, do extractions, prep them, process them in the field, and get them to a point where we can ship those over to the UNC Sequencing Laboratory and actually be sequencing Galapagos samples for the first time.